Whenever you take a measurement in physics, it's important to record the precision of the tool that you use. Um, you can sort of implicitly tell the precision of a measurement by looking at the number of decimal places that are recorded, but there's this sort of a more explicit way of presenting it. Most me measurements that you take would look like this. So someone took a measurement of something and they said that it was 65.3 milliliters. But then they tack this on on the end, which is what we call the uncertainty of the measurement. And it's plus or minus 0 0.05 milliliters. What that 0 0.05 mil milliliters means is that the true volume of the object will be somewhere between 65.25 and 65.35. When you're taking a measurement, there's sort of a rule of thumb for what you record as the uncertainty of the measurement. When you're, when you're using a digital de device, it's always going to be the smallest decimal on the display. So if it measures 65.3, then it's going to be plus or minus 0 0.1. Whereas with an analog device, usually you're going to uh, measure half of the smallest increment on the scale. So, in the previous example, it would be 65.3 plus or minus 0 0.05. One thing you have to be careful, careful about, though, sometimes, is that when you have an analog device that has two ends, so say a ruler, well, well you're, there's some uncertainty with both ends of the measurement often. And so you will generally have to use the full increment. So with a standard meter stick, you would use plus or minus one millimeter. Um, so if we take a look at this, uh, this uh, over here, if we take a look at this um, measurement that was taken over here, we can see that it's somewhere, hmm, somewhere, it's pretty close to 24, because each increment means 2, so it's going to be 24. And so the measurement here is going to be 24 millimeters, but the uncertainty of it has to be half of the smallest increment, because it's an analog device. And so the smallest increment looks like it's going to be 2 millimeters, so it's going to be... And so that means the uncertainty for this case is going to be 1 millimeter. So then we could represent the uncertainty as being 24 plus or minus 1 millimeter. Um, another way that is common to represent the uncertainty would be to convert the 1 millimeter into a percentage. And we'll discuss later what, what the use of this is. So 1 millimeter is 4% is of 24. One thing to keep in mind is when you're writing your uncertainties, you should always keep your uncertainties rounded to one significant digit. Now, when you're taking a, when you're doing an experiment, and often the measurement tool that you're using is a very precise measurement tool. So, especially with timers, timers show lots of decimal places, but that doesn't mean that they're extremely precise because What's more, what's more a problem when you're taking a measurement with the timer would be the limitations of the human operating machine. So it, would, it wouldn't be quite accurate to use the, the smallest decimal place that it records when there's no way that you can record to that precision using the stopwatch. So what you have to do in that type of a situation, that would be a really good situation where you would want to do multiple trials. So you would take the same measurement several times and get some data like we have down here. So for these time measurements, what you would do is you would find the largest one and the smallest one, so 4.86 and 3.92. Find the difference between them, so subtract them. You get 0 0.94 divided by 2 and then you get 0 0.47. Then you would calculate the average of the six numbers, so you add the numbers up together and then you divide by six and you get this number. So your final measurement, your basic, your final answer that you're going to use for your calculations later on is going to be 4.4 seconds plus or minus 0 0.5 seconds. Remember, one significant digit for uncertainties, and you would generally round your, your measurement so that it has 
basically the same decimal places as your uncertainty. Now when you're uh, carrying out calculations with your uncertainty, so when you're adding or subtracting two measurements, the, the basic rule for that is going to be that you're going to add the absolute uncertainties. So when you have these two numbers and you're subtracting them, what you would do is you would first subtract the numbers, so 3.2 minus 1.5, and then you would add the uncertainties. So your final answer is going to be 1.7 plus or minus 0 0.8. When you're multiplying or dividing two measurements, you would add the relative uncertainties. So the relative uncertainties was the percentage uncertainties that I talked about before. Um, so the uncertainty will be 3% of 2 and 5% of 3. And so when you multiply them together, you'd multiply the, the original numbers. So 2 times 3 is 6. And you add the relative uncertainties. So it gives you 8%. 8% of 6 is around 0 0.5. Now often you're given numbers that have absolute uncertainties and you have to multiply them. So it's a bit of a longer process. So what you would do is first thing you would do is convert the uncertainties into relative uncertainties. Then multiply the numbers and add the relative uncertainties. Then if you want you convert the uncertainties back to um, absolute uncertainties to get 0 0.2 centimeters squared. There's a couple other rules that they sort of flow from the rules that we've talked about but sometimes it's quicker just to think about these rules separately. So when you raise a measurement to an exponent, what you end up doing is you end up multiplying the relative uncertainty by the exponent itself. Uh, so if, if you had something that was raised to the power of 4, then you would multiply it by 4. When you multiply and divide a measurement by a constant, well the constant doesn't have uncertainty, so all you have to do is just multiply or divide the uncertainty by the constant. Uh, that would be the absolute uncertainty, not the relative uncertainty. If you had relative uncertainty, then you wouldn't have to do anything with that. Um, so here's an example. Suppose that you are using the formula E equals MGH, and you're given these measurements. And you have to determine the value of E, including the uncertainties. There are four steps to solving this problem first thing that you would do is you would convert all of the uncertainties to relative uncertainty. Since the height was already given to you as a relative uncertainty, the 3%, um, you don't need to do anything with that one. But the mass needs to be converted to uncertainty, to, to relative uncertainty. So you take the 0.7 divided by 5.6 and you get 12.5%. Next step is you'd, you'd substitute the values in, so you take the values here, substitute them into the equation. If the equation needs to be rearranged, then you have to do that as well. Uh, then you have to, then, then you're going to do what you would normally do when you substitute into an equation. So in this case, it's all multiplication, so you just multiply the three values, and you get this number. Uh, and you take the uncertainties and you add them in this case, because it's multiplication. So 12.5% plus 3% gives you 15.5%. Finally, um, often your final answer shouldn't be in relative uncertainty. It should be in absolute uncertainty. So you need to convert your relative uncertainty of 15.5% back to an absolute uncertainty. So then we take 15.5% of your number and you get about 10,000. So your final answer is going to be that it's 6.6 .6 plus or minus 1 times 10 to the 4. It's a nice way to sort of avoid having large numbers and too much, uh, and too much uh, scientific notation.